the next uh, uh, major bit of this subtopic. And you'll be pleased to know that we will most definitely finish the syllabus next week, in my opinion. Okay, so we will have what I told you right at the beginning of term we would have, uh, which is a space of about three weeks in which we can go back through this material. I can respond to whatever questions you might have. I can pick out things that are, I think are particularly important. Uh, and then we can start looking at past exam papers and so on. Right? So there's a whole three week chunk, uh, a quarter of the term as it were, set aside for going through that sort of material. So you might like to think in advance about the things that you'd want particularly to spend time on. Um, I'd much rather respond to what you want uh, in that regard than just sort of blindly go into past exam papers or whatever. Um, so we're into properties of, of gases now. This is the start of thermodynamics uh, for you. And there are three basic laws that we need to think about and then we're going to wrap them all together in one uh, sort of master equation uh, at the end, which we should be able to do uh, this morning, I think. Um, so the first of these, or the first one that I'm going to talk about, is something called Boyle's Law, which won't surprise you to hear came from the work of a guy called Boyle. Um, and um, he established that we, if we had a fixed mass of gas, now what does that mean? It means fixed number of atoms or molecules. All right? So there's nothing entering our system, nothing leaving our system. It's a closed system with a fixed number um, of, uh, of, of atoms, molecules within it. Um, in this case, we're going to hold it at a constant temperature. And what Boyle discovered is that uh, the volume of the gas is then proportional to the pressure. All right, so half the volume, you double the pressure, or vice versa. Very, very simple straight line relationship, which is what's shown on the graph at the bottom right uh, of the screen there. Each of those lines corresponds to a different fixed temperature, and the graph is then showing you um, the relationship between pressure. And, uh, and volume, all right? The volume is inversely proportional to pressure. So you double one, you halve the other. So that's Boyle's law. If we're going to write it down in equation form, <coughs> we'd end up with pressure times volume is equal to some constant. All right? P is proportional to one over V. So that, I hope, is relatively straightforward. Yeah? Hope so. Uh, then we get to the work of a scientist called Charles. Hence Charles Law. Um, and again, fixed mass of gas. This is going to be a common assumption throughout. We have to think in terms of closed systems. Nothing coming in, nothing going out. Um, and here, what he did was to keep the pressure constant. All right, so it was connected up to some sort of manometer, his equipment. He always kept the pressure at some constant level and discovered that the volume then of the gas is proportional to its temperature. All right, which means double the temperature, you double the volume. Now, by temperature, we're talking about temperature on the absolute scale, on the thermodynamic scale. All right, so degrees Kelvin. And always that will be true through everything I'm going to tell you about. Uh, when we're looking at the properties of gases in this context, we will always, 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 always be talking about the thermodynamic uh, temperature scale. So we end up with a mathematical <coughs> equivalent here which tells us that um, volume divided by temperature is a constant, right? Because V is proportional to T, so V is some constant times. Uh, T. And that's shown graphically on the bottom. If we plot volume against temperature, we will get a straight line. The gradient of that straight line will depend on whatever fixed pressure we've applied to our system, but nevertheless it will be uh, a straight line. And although experimentally you will never be able to trace it back to the origin in the sense that we can never get back to absolute zero, uh, nevertheless if you extrapolate your data points you should always get back to the origin. 
Right, final one. Uh, I'm tempted to say this was named after someone called Pressure, but I'm not going to go down that route. <laughs> really very, very silly. Uh, but again, fixed mass of gas. And this time we're keeping the volume constant. Okay, then the pressure uh, of the gas is proportional to temperature. So double the temperature on the thermodynamic scale, you will double the pressure. So this is the effect you will see in your car tires, which are to a reasonably good approximation constant volume, all right, because they have steel banding around them, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, it's why pressure will differ between mid-January, when your car has been sat on the road motionless, um, and mid-summer, after you've been driving at 70 miles an hour on the motorway. Right? The temperature of the gas inside your car will change between those two extremes, uh, which means actually that the pressure of the gas uh, in your car will have changed. You might want to measure that sometime just to prove to yourself that that's the case, but it is. Um, so those are three key, key gas laws and they're all enshrined in this table here so the quantities that we've kept constant through these three uh, variants are always going to be the mass of the gas the number of atoms, the number of molecules uh, in our system but then for each one in turn we've kept one of the other principal physical variables constant and we've looked at the variation uh, of one of the other two as the third one is changed. Okay, so Boyle's law was fixed temperature, Charles law was fixed pressure, the pressure law was fixed volume, and we ended up with these basic relationships between the other two variables uh, in our system. So that if we had a gas where... Um, at one uh, particular physical state, we had a given pressure and therefore a given volume. If we change that pressure, we can now predict what the other, what the new volume would be. All right, so that's essentially what this third column in the table is trying to draw out uh, from this. And we can therefore wrap these whole things together uh, into one equation. So we end up with something that will, in a moment, be the perfect gas law. At the moment, this is, this is getting close to it. But pressure times volume over temperature is always going to be a constant. All right? The constant in each case is different up here. It doesn't matter. We're combining three constants. We get a constant. All right? So this now is a distinct value from these three, all of which are different from one another, but nevertheless this now, or could be, there's no reason why they shouldn't be, this now becomes our master equation at the bottom. Alright, so we can, we can reproduce Boyle's law really easily. If we keep temperature constant, right, which is one of our things, then we'd actually just sort of move that up to the other side. We just get a different constant on the right hand side and we have pressure times volume as a constant, which is exactly what Boyle's law said. And you can do that for the other two. So all of these relationships are enshrined in here. The only thing that you would have to change in order to reproduce these is just to say, to decide which of these particular physical quantities you were going to hold constant in this case. So whatever that one was, it moves over to the right hand side of the equation. Okay. We haven't yet talked about what a perfect gas is. All right. I'll come back to that in a slide or two's time. Um, let's just focus on, on this for now. Now we can work out what the value of that constant is. And this is something that's called, not surprisingly, the gas constant. Um, if we take some fairly standard values, and you could measure these experimentally if you wanted to, uh, but standard atmospheric pressure is 101 kilopascals. We've mentioned that already in this module. The volume of one mole of gas, any gas at this pressure, is 0.0224 of a cubic meter, provided that the temperature 
is at 273.15 Kelvin, in other words, what we would describe as zero Celsius. So if you put those values into our gas equation, we can now work out what the constant is, this gas constant. Okay, which you can do if you like, you can look it up, it's fairly readily uh, found. I'm not even sure I wrote it down in my notes, but I can probably tell you almost from memory what it is. Um, it's on data cards, you know, it's on your calculator, it's everything, everywhere. It's about 8.3, and then we have to think about units. Well, units are going to be straightforward. Um, it's actually joules per degree per mole. And that just follows from the units associated with these things. So this was for one mole. If we have more than one mole of gas, then we just have to scale it with the number of moles present. All right, so we introduce number of moles in there. So now PV divided by T is equal to N times the gas constant. Or, and you'll see it written down this way in the long text, because if you rearrange that, pressure times volume is number of moles times gas constant times absolute <coughs> temperature. And this then becomes our perfect gas equation.